Are you struggling to get that epic and cinematic look from your drone footage? Don't worry, we are about to fix that. I will walk you through my exact DLogam color grading workflow in DaVinci Resolve. No LUTs, no confusion, just a clean and minimal note setup that takes your flat images to high-end and professional results every time. So welcome to this tutorial, let's dive into DaVinci Resolve. Ok, so first we have to get our project settings right. Let's press this little settings icon on the bottom right and head to the color management tab. For the color science we use DaVinci YRGB. For our timeline color space we choose DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and for the output color space we choose Rec 709 Gamma 2.2. I always recommend to choose Gamma 2.2 over 2.4 since it gives more accurate results when viewed on phones or laptops. And since the most of us are exporting their work on YouTube or social media in general, this is the way to go. The next thing that I would change is the 3D lookup table interpolation. By default it's set to trilinear, but we want to change it to tetrahedral. This option is better for log or drone footage, since it helps to reduce banding and color artifacts, especially in the shadow areas. With the right project settings we can press save and head to the color page. So in this tutorial we will make use of color space transforms. Here is a before and after of this example clip. Of course we could take the easy route and simply throw on a DGI LUT instead of the color space transforms like in this clip for example. Here is a quick before and after. And yes, we would get pretty decent results, but that's actually not the way that we want to work with this image. If we don't make use of these transformations and just throw on a LUT, we would limit ourselves throughout the entire edit before we even started. And that's not what we actually want, right? That's why we want to use the Winchy White Gamut, which is a much bigger color space, which provides us with endless flexibility when we are color grading. So, let's create two nodes and apply our color space transforms. Go to the effects panel, search for color space transform and apply it on both of these nodes. The first one is labeled the Winchy White Gamut and the second one is called Rec 709. Now listen carefully, this is very important. At the first node, we choose DJID gamut as our input color space. And the input gamma is the part where most people fail. It's obvious that you would estimate that you have to choose DJID log, but that's incorrect for DLog amp drone footage. Even though they sound similar, they are completely different. DJI themselves confirmed this, so don't confuse DLogM with DLog. DLogM is more of a Rec 709 standard, so that's why we choose Rec 709. For the output color space, we choose the Winchy White Gamut, and for our output gamma, we choose the Winchy Intermediate. So, the first node looks like this. On our second node, we do the same thing, vice versa. We choose the Vinci White Gamut for our input color space. The input gamma is the Vinci Intermediate. The output color space is Rec 709. And for the output gamma, we choose Gamma 2.2 to perfectly match our project settings. Because, as you see, when we head to the color management in the project settings, we have the output color space Rec 709 Gamma 2.2. And here, the same thing, output gamma, gamma 2.2. Now with the right project settings and both of our CST nodes set correctly, we have created the perfect starting point and now we can actually move on with our color correction. As I said before, we will keep it clean and minimal, so let's create 4 nodes. Keep in mind that all our adjustments always happen between these two CST nodes. Think of it like a sandwich, where every adjustment between our input and output runs through this node chain and all of that in our DaVinci White Gamut working space. Ok, so our first node is called HDR Exposure. Our second node, which is our white balance node, is called Linear Balance. And our third node is the Contrast. These nodes will act as our color correction part. 
With these nodes, you set the proper baseline for an image. That's why you have to get them right and correctly, since all creative adjustments that follow afterwards will be affected based on these color correction nodes. And this could make or break your shot. Since you will now learn how to properly color correct your shot, you will see what you can actually get out of your image with only three nodes. Our last node will be our curves node. But for now, we pull it to the side and focus and concentrate ourselves on our color correction part. So, the first thing we will work with is our contrast. What I like to do is to push the saturation down to zero. Since contrast shows the difference between all your blacks and whites, it's easier to work with it when we first get rid of all the colors. A cool trick that you can apply here is to use a middle gray DCTL. This is a free tool and it's really really powerful. Here is what it does. If you apply it onto your node, check all these boxes and set it to DaVinci Intermediate, you can move to the Curves tab and you will see a peak in our curve which represents the middle grey point or the right pivot in your current DaVinci white gamut working space. This pivot value now represents the center point between all your blacks and whites. So, for our pivot we choose 0 0.336. If we now lock this grey or middle point on our curve, we always keep the perfect balance with all our blacks and whites adjustments around this point. We lift our highlights, play around with our shadows. Small tweaks and changes are enough here. Now you can bring back the saturation and look how rich our shot became by just playing around with the contrast and the right middle grey point. Here's the before and after. Cool right? Now let's move to the second node which is our linear balance. You can think of it as our white balance node. First we make a right click and change the gamma to linear. Since this option gives us a more pleasing and constant look with all our adjustments. The most of you would play around with the tint and temperature slider to make an image warmer or cooler. But since tint and temperature actually affects the image as a whole, we can achieve much better results when we balance it out with the gain setting in the primaries tab and the linear gamma option on the node itself. That's the only knob that I would always touch when I'm dealing with my white balance. In my case, I push the gain wheel a little bit towards the orange side to achieve an overall warmer look. And again, we don't go too hard. Subtle changes make all the difference. Yeah, that's it. I think I like this image. Here's another before and after. Now that we have our contrast and our white balance as we like, we will adjust our exposure. I'm always only using the exposure slider in the HDR global wheel. This technique is from another colorist and he said that offset is one of the last options that you should choose to adjust the exposure. I tested it out and I always achieved better results when I use this method with the HDR exposure slider. Here's another before and after. As you see, this image is pretty much perfect already and we didn't even make use of a lot. But now we can take it even further a little bit by playing around with masks or the saturation of our colors. This would now be the look development or the color grading part. As I mentioned before, everything till now was our color correction part and this is the most important one because this sets the baseline for a good color grade. Now we come back to our curves node where we can add or take away specific colors to our likings. But before we play around here, I will quickly show you another way or another approach how you could do all of that a lot faster if you're lazy. So let's copy this clip and remove all our gradings. Since this shot was captured with the DJI Mini 4 Pro with the DLogM picture profile, I could simply apply the DJI Mini 4 Pro to Rec. 709 conversion LUT. Now I could make a few other adjustments and this would already give us decent and similar results to the other workflow from before. 
but we have less flexibility to adjust everything to our likings since we are working in a much more narrow or compressed color space. Of course you could always approach your color grading this way, but keep in mind that every adjustment you make on your way has to happen before the LUT node. So let's move back to our color space transforms approach. I just wanted to show you another way how you can get decent results way faster. If you're still here, thank you for watching and I would highly appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel or leave a like or a comment. Thank you. Ok, so as I said, within the curves node, I would now add or take away specific colors in my shot. I can adjust the U values, the saturation and the luminance of each color by switching around these small tabs on this bar at the top. I mostly work with the third mini tab which is called U vs Saturation. Here I can create keyframes by clicking on the section I want to manipulate. Let's say I want to get a little bit more red and brown tones out of the rocks. I would simply click here and add a little bit saturation to enhance this color. If I also want the water to appear stronger, I would again pick this pipette and press around on some points so that I know exactly which colors have to be adjusted and which colors I'm actually working with. The same thing could be applied to any other color. And yeah, if you want a more creative look, you can switch to the U versus U and change the color of the water for example. This way, you can let it appear more greenish or more blue. You could also adjust your green tones from the grass here to let it appear more yellow. Here you can get creative, but you should always try to stay as realistic as possible and it should always match your story and the overall look and feel of an image. Let's create another node and call it Masks. I will quickly show you how to use them, because sometimes they are very handy if you want to highlight specific parts in your image, or let's say you want to enhance or remove unwanted colors in different areas. I could easily guide the viewer's eye by creating a circular mask shape. And when I now invert it and change the exposure on the outside, of course again with the HDR exposure slider, we achieve a little bit of a vignette effect and the center of our image becomes more dominant. Here's another example of the sunrise clip from before. Here I just masked out the sky and gave it an overall warmer look and also pushed the U value of the orange tone a little bit. This would be the before and after without the mask shape. Of course, these are very basic moves, but by adding masks you can guide the viewer's eye to specific points in an image and you can also achieve an overall completely different look. Now you saw the whole process of color correcting and color grading d and drone footage in DaVinci Resolve. I hope you can take away at least something and again, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.